Barcelona, Bet Yeshua, and Mishpocha around the world. Thank you for lighting the candles, and thank you, Lord, for starting the Shabbat. Are you guys ready? So let's open up prayer and let's give this thing to the Lord. We have exciting news to be able to uh, announce, and I'll do that later on, of course. I'll hold on to it, but we'll announce that later on. But let's open up prayer and give this night to the Lord. Avinu, our Father in heaven, we love you, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. You are a kind, wonderful, awesome God, and we bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for this service and this time of worship for you, Lord. We pray that all of our uh, Facebook Alive friends and Mishpucha, the Beth Yeshua family, are watching tonight, Lord, and just giving you praise as well. So we come before you, Yeshua's name, Lord, and ask your blessing be upon us, healing be upon a lot of our folks that are hurting, Lord. We'll pray specifically for them later, but just pray for healing for them now and blessing upon them, Lord. Watch over them, protect them, Lord, and protect us as we glorify and magnify thy name tonight, Lord. Pray that you fill us mightily with your spirit, that our prayers, that our dancing, our worship of you will be pleasing in your sight. Bless the teaching, Lord, as we learn from your word, and that your name would be glorified in our lives, Lord. Help us to live our lives accordingly, and we know that we're going to have a very tough road in the next month, two months. The future, Lord, is not going to be as easy as it was in the past, so we just pray for courage, we pray for boldness, we pray for comfort blessing, and you will glorify your name through our lives, Lord, each and every day. So watch over Beth Yeshua, Lord. Work us, work in us miracles, and we just pray that we will follow you in the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. And amen. That's good. Say, 
who is like our Savior. We will give thanks to our God. We will give thanks to our Lord. We will give thanks to our King. We will give thanks to our Savior. Blessed be our God. Blessed be our Lord. Blessed be our King. Blessed be our Deliverer. You are our God. You are our Lord. You are our King. You are our Deliverer. You are He to whom our fathers offered greatly incense. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you are holy, Lord. And your word says that without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you are holy. And we are not, but you are sanctifying us. You are making us holy from the inside out. That is our time in the, in the sanctification process until we are glorified. We thank you, Father, for never taking your eyes off of us. Sometimes we take our eyes off of you. And Lord, whenever we do that, it gets more difficult. So thank you, Father, for saving us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. Please help us to continue to worship you in spirit truth. And at this time, I would like to uh, introduce our worship dance.
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Is Pastor Rich in the way? Can we can? <laughs> might have to move over, Rich. Okay. He's fine. Over to the other side a little bit, yeah. No, he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. No, he's okay. 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 Very good. Well, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. The Lord is to come. Yeah. But he's here right now with us. Wherever there's two or more gathered, he is with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. All right. Time for prayer. Do you have any prayer requests? Anybody on Facebook Alive, if you got prayer requests, please post them and we will pray. I had a whole bunch of statements up here, but now they're gone, so I don't understand that. But I am not a Facebook Live person. <laughs> yes. text you? He did, and it was just out of the blue, and I got to tell him a little bit more about the Lord, and about, you know, the gospel, and we had a nice little talk, and it was just, he said he'd come and get back to me in a few days, and so I think really God's opening a door here. All right. Yeah, so pray for salvation, amen? Right? Yes, exactly. All right. Praise the Lord. God would love that. Anybody else? Prayer requests? Yes. Guy I grew up with uh, when we were kids, he contacted me the second time. Uh, a Jewish guy, his name is Kenny, and I got to witness to the Lord in him. So I pray that uh, God will bring him faith. All right, we'll pray for his salvation. I'm going to say Jewish guy. Old friend, huh? Yeah, we grew up together. I was told right. to stick ball and everything. Wow, stick ball in Brooklyn, huh? That is awesome. So you guys got two two old friends that are, well, family and friends that are uh, keeping in contact. So that's good. Anybody else? Prayer requests? Yes. Spiritual family. Yes. 
I did not have that on the list. So <laughs> you want to pray for our leaders, huh? Yes. Okay. They're they're worthy of our prayers, you know that. Our leaders, our president. We need to pray for big time revival, huh? Let's pray for a revival in this land. That's what we need. We need some leaders that are going to be following the Lord. Okay, anybody else? All right, let's go before the Lord. Father in heaven, we love you, thank you, worship you, praise you, give you glory. We lift up these prayer concerns that we have, Lord. We lift up Israel. Israel is uh, always uh, under attack, Lord, and from Iran or Syria or somebody that's around her father and uh, just pray that she continue to defend herself and Lord just pray for great wisdom upon her leaders as well they're, uh, they're having a difficult time with putting together government once again and uh, Lord a lot of uh, revelations have come these last week about some of these leaders as well so we just pray that they would be godly that they'll get saved that they'll see the light of Yeshua and that they'll receive your wisdom, Lord, on how to lead and how to live uh, lives accordingly. Lift up uh, my nephew Ryan, who had uh, ACL surgery yesterday, Lord. Pray for healing, quick healing, and blessing upon him. Pray for my sister Kathy and my dad for salvation and healing, both upon them. Kathy has cancer. My dad broke a hip. So we pray for uh, healings and salvation upon the Lord. Help them to see the light. To give their lives completely unto Yeshua. Lift up Cameron, Lord, who needs healing. He needs direction and blessing and, and a great doctor to uh, be able to uh, work on him, Lord. And pray for Howard. He needs healing, too. And he's going to need a great doctor as well to, to work on him. So pray for blessings and healings, Lord. Mary Ellen, who's had lots of seizures, Lord. And just pray for complete healing for her. And that the seizures would stop, Lord. Lift up Chris, Beth's nephew. Pray for salvation. Pray for him to continue to have a desire to talk with Beth so that she can share that wonderful good news. Lift up Kenny for salvation, Lord, and help him to continue to want to talk with Pastor Cooper and stay in touch, Lord, so that he can hear that wonderful good news and be saved as well. And Lord, lift up Kelly and he's healing her feet and legs, Lord, and just pray for uh, your blessing upon her, Lord. And uh, Debbie, pray for healing. She's at home. We're praising God for that, but that's only because her insurance is not paying for her hospital visit anymore. So we just pray for healing at home. She's got to see a doctor at the end of the month, Lord. So just pray that this hole in her body is going to heal and heal right up so that they can actually perform the last surgery she needs. Lift up Melanie's mom, Lord. We pray for healing there. And Lord, she's got cancer, she's on chemo, and just pray for complete healing there, Lord. And, and Saturday, Lord, uh, shoulder and arms, we pray for healing for her, Lord. And Paul Norris was paralyzed left side, Lord, he had a stroke a long time ago, but he's still paralyzed. So, Lord, just pray for your healing hand to be upon him. That you touch his body and heal him completely, Lord. And, Lord, we've got a whole lot of people here. That need healing. We lift up Pearl, Lord, who has not been doing well lately. And she needs healing, Lord. She went to the hospital for a few days as well. She's better now, but she is very tired, Lord. We pray for strength. We pray for blessing. We pray for healing upon her body as well. And Lord, we just pray that you will touch each and every person that we've mentioned here tonight, Lord. And the ones we haven't mentioned, Lord, that we don't even know about in this congregation that are not doing so well or that need healing, Lord. My, my body needs healing as well, but pray, Lord, that you touch each and every one of us and that you will heal us, Lord, and let us be able to give a great testimony to your wonderful touch of healing, Lord. Lift up all of our leaders, our presidents, Lord, our governors, especially in our Congress. We pray for revival in their hearts, O oh Lord. Pray that they're going to get saved if they're not already saved. We know many of them are not. And so we need, Lord, the gospel to go forth in a mighty way. Let there be revival in the land and in our government, Lord.
pray that our leaders are going to work together, Lord, for the common good of this nation and the world as well, that not to be fighting over issues, Lord, and politicizing everything, oh Lord. We pray for blessings. We pray for the common good to prevail. And just pray that you will glorify your name through this nation. Lord, we need to be going back to being a Christian nation that sends out people to the world to share the good news message with other countries. And now those other countries are sending their missionaries to the United States. What a terrible turnaround that is for us. But we pray, Lord, that you would help us to get back to our roots, our Jewish roots, our Christian roots, that your will would be done with us, O oh Lord. Pray for Las Vegas that we turn it around as well, Lord. That many of the believers here in town, all of us, would be able to share the good news and be a light to a dying world. That your name, the name of Yahweh, the name of Yeshua, would be glorified. And that your will would be done. We love you, Lord. We worship you. We praise you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you, folks, for praying. My Facebook locked up on that. So thank you for letting me know about the prayer request there for Paul. Now we got some great announcements. Number one announcement, Monday night we are going to go back to having Bible study in Samson's home. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, Monday night, 7 o'clock, Samson's home. We're having Bible study. It will also be on Facebook Alive. So, folks that watch, you will be blessed. And YouTube, we're also putting our videos on YouTube afterwards. So, it won't be live on YouTube at this time. We need more uh, people to sign up on our YouTube channel. So, everybody, sign up. If you're on our Facebook channel, go to our YouTube channel and sign up as well. We need like a thousand to be able to do Facebook, uh, to do YouTube Live. We need a thousand people to sign up. We have like 70. So that's a big tall order for a Messianic congregation. Now we have a lot of people on Facebook, but uh, we don't have a lot on YouTube because we just started putting a lot more videos on there. So. Anyways, that will increase as time goes on, but let people know, folks. Let them know, because I do eventually want to go to YouTube. YouTube seems to be a much easier situation on putting videos live, and, and uh, Facebook does a lot of, uh, what is that called? Uh, censorship. Sensing, yeah, censorship. And uh, they do censorship our videos, if you can imagine that. So... That's why I want to go to YouTube. Eventually, we need to find a Christian YouTube station that won't censor us. However, uh, in the meantime, we'll continue to do what we're doing. So pray about that as well. And of course, next Friday night, we are going back to open services. Praise the Lord. So tell your friends next Friday night to meet here at the congregation. No longer going to be closed. So praise the Lord. The uh, governor has opened up Las Vegas partially, somewhat. Phase one of the plan. And uh, we're having services next Friday night. All right? So be here. Be there or be square, as they used to say. So we got Bible study Monday night, service next Friday night. And... Uh, Outreach is still kind of on in question mark there. They don't have an outreach yet. But the good news is UNLV is going to be having classes starting in August. So we will go back to UNLV in August. So praise the Lord. We just got to wait for the summer for that. That's good news. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, let's open up our Bibles to the book of Acts. And uh, let's get to our chapter 4. In our series, we're going through the book of Acts because 
the early congregation, the body of Messiah, is a wonderful place to go back to, to learn what we need to be doing for today. They did a lot of things for the Lord back then that we need to be doing for the Lord today. And uh, it's very important for our congregation. So last week we started chapter 4 and we saw how the apostles responded to over-controlling authority. The Lord Yeshua performed miracles through them. They in turn were arrested by the authorities and commanded to stop evangelizing and teaching in Yeshua's name. They immediately refused with great boldness to the authorities that literally could sentence them to death, minimally keep them in jail. The apostles were willing to put their lives on the line for Yeshua and his truth. And we pick up the story with the apostles set free without punishment, which was a miracle, of course. And now they have joined the other disciples. And this is a great encouragement to all believers to show us that we need to stand up for what is right in God's eyes, not necessarily what's right in humankind's eyes. Because most of the time, what people believe is right is not right in God's eyes. So we need to get God's perspective on life in general and specific. Now, let's turn to verse 23 of Acts chapter 4. And when they had been released, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had to say to them. So after Kepha and John are let go, they did not run home to their families in Galilee, but they went to their new family, their congregation in Jerusalem of apostles and disciples. Now I'm sure they were very excited for a number of reasons. Number one, God worked a miracle through Kepha. The lame man was healed. God worked Salvation miracles through them as, as our number two reason. Possibly up to 15,000 Jewish people were newly saved, had newly believed in Yeshua, and were now praising the Lord all together, united as one. And the third reason they were excited, God worked a saving miracle in that they were saved from the Sanhedrin's prosecution and persecution. So now they went home to the apostles and disciples and told them the story of what happened to them. Very encouraging, very exciting, and it helped the rest of the congregation to get active for the Lord as well. Now when miracles or exciting events occur in your life, you want to tell your family, you want to tell your friends, you want to tell your congregation, amen? But you want to let them know that God is working in your life and that God can work in their lives as well. This greatly encourages everyone who hears the testimony. And that's why we like to be able to tell of our testimonies and how God is working in our lives because he can easily do the same for others as well. Verse 24, and when they heard this, they lifted their voices to God with one accord and said, O Lord, it is thou who didst make the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. So now the disciples, the rest of the apostles and disciples, they wanted to pray. They wanted to pray because of these great miracles that were occurring. This should be the response of all believers when we have opposition in our ministries or in our lives. Three things we can do when you have opposition to your life or to your ministry. Pray, pray, and guess what? Pray, yes. In their prayer, though, they address God as despots. In the Greek, despot, it means master. So in your Bible, especially in the New America, the New American Standard here, it says Lord in verse 24, O Lord, but it means really O Master. And so it's implying that believers are slaves and we need to listen and obey our Master, our Lord God. 
And if that includes suffering for righteousness' sake, then so be it, as the apostles were ready to do. And as we're going to see, they asked for great boldness from the Lord, and guess what they got? Great boldness. When uh, you ask for a fish and God gives you a, he gives you a fish, yeah. Your enemies will give you a snake. <laughs> then they address him as creator here in verse 24. For first it's master, then it's creator of the universe. And they partially quote from Exodus chapter 20 verse 11, which is where the Lord gave the Jewish people the Ten Commandments. But they acknowledge him as creator. You are the creator of the universe, and you created us. You are our master, so we need to follow you. We call you Adonai. We call you Lord. Verse 25, 26. Who by the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kodesh, through the mouth of our father David, thy servant, didst say, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples devise futile things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against Adonai, against the Lord, could be Yahweh in the Hebrew, and against his Messiah, his Mashiach. So it's Yahweh and the other Lord, Messiah, who is our master. So right up, verse 25, it's interesting, he says, when he quotes this verse, it's coming from Psalm 2. He's quoting right from Psalm chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. We're going to go there in, in just a few moments. Well, actually, let's go there right now. Go to Psalm 2, verse 1 and 2. But here in verse 25, he says, Through the mouth of our father David, thy servant... When you get to Psalm 2, there's no author recognized for Psalm 2. So now the disciples, the apostles, are praying unto the Lord by the power of the Ruach Chodesh. So you think the Ruach Chodesh knows who wrote Psalm 2? Yeah. So if you don't have it in there, then put a little note in there. King David wrote Psalm 2, and it's a messianic psalm. And right away, verse 1 and 2, it says, Why are the nations in an uproar, and the peoples devising a vain thing? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against Yahweh, and against his anointed, which in the Hebrew is Mashiach. Let us tear their feathers apart and cast away their cords from us. So the kings of the earth and the rulers coming against God and his Messiah. The nations, though, are in an uproar, the Gentiles in an uproar, and the peoples devising a vain thing. Back to Acts chapter 2. And so we see a fulfillment here. Acts chapter 4, I mean. We see a fulfillment here in verse 25 and 26. King David said through the mouth, or the mouth through David, that this was the case when the Gentiles and the Jewish people attacked Yeshua, the Messiah. And here in verse 25 and 26, the apostles recognize that the Bible has dual authorship. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible, both Tanakh and the Brit Chadashah, and there's human authors as well. For Psalm 2, we see that David was the human author. So that's a dual authorship. The Ruach Hodesh writes the scripture, and humans write the scripture as well. And of course, in this case, it was David. So now the explanation and the application come in following verses, verse 27 and 28. Take a look. For truly in this city there were gathered together against thy holy servant Yeshua, whom thou didst anoint, meaning the anointed one, right? Messiah, 
both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever thy hand and thy purpose predestined to occur. So in verse 27 and 28, we see the application to what was done to Messiah Yeshua. Specifically, it was Herod and Pontius Pilate, Gentile kings, who could have let Yeshua go, but in the end they did not. They killed him. But they were helped by the Gentiles, that would be the Roman soldiers, specifically the one to nail Yeshua to that tree, but also the Jewish people as well. They helped these leaders to murder our Messiah. We do not hold that against anyone, of course. But the Jewish people, they voted for Bar Allah to be released instead of Yeshua, an innocent man. And remember, Pontius Pilate even said he was an innocent man, wanted to let him go. So this helps to make all people guilty, Jew and Gentile alike, versus the wrongful murder of the innocent Messiah. But remember, God used evil men to fulfill his purpose. He was pleased to crush the Messiah. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10, that's the quote, that God wanted the Messiah to be crushed. It was part of his plan, but it was predestined, since he would atone for the sins of the world. The Lord predestined all of this to happen. Predestined, what does it mean? It means predetermined, beforehand. God worked out his plan ahead of time. He used humankind to work out his plan. He used the Gentiles, he used the Jews, he used the Gentile kings to work out his plan. It was predetermined beforehand. A lot of believers have troubles with this predetermined, this, this chosen aspect. And I tell them, listen, the Jewish people are chosen. So here's a very easy way to understand predestination. God chose the Jewish people ahead of time. They did not choose him. He chose them. Jewish people recognize that they're chosen, but they don't understand necessarily what they're chosen for. Many Jewish people around the world believe that they're chosen for persecution. When they're chosen to be God's people, no matter what happens in their life. They were chosen as a race to be God's people to deliver the message to the world, the Gentile world as well. That the God of Israel is the God of the universe. That the God of Israel is the God of the Gentiles as well as the Jews. And that he's supposed to have a son. And that son is the Mashiach, Yeshua. Verse 29. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that thy bondservants may speak thy word with all confidence. So here's the application now of quoting Psalm 2 that the Gentile kings and the Gentiles and even the Jewish people came against the Messiah and even the Lord, he said that application of the evil that was done to Yeshua is now applied to the apostles' current situation. Since they're followers of Yeshua, they're going to receive that persecution as well. The attack against the good news message of Yeshua will continue. And so they pray and ask the Lord for his intervention. His will to be done with these threats. Notice they do not ask for the attack to be taken away. They pray for God's will to be done. They say, look what's happening to us. They're attacking us, Lord. They're trying to stop the good news message. 
of your son Yeshua going forth. What are you going to do about it, Lord? Your will be done. They killed your Messiah. They're trying to kill us. What are you going to do? Then they ask for boldness to continue to share the good news. You see that? Help us to speak with all confidence, with boldness. Take note of their threats. Hey, they're threatening us, Lord. They're putting us behind bars. Grant that thy bond servants may speak with full confidence and authority. Verse 30. While thou dost extend thy hand to heal, and signs and wonders take place through the name of thy holy servant, Yeshua. Thy will be done. Help us to preach the gospel while you continue to perform miracles, signs, and wonders through the apostles and the disciples. Notice the prayer ends, through the name of the Holy One, Yeshua. Thy holy servant, Yeshua which was quoted in Psalm 2 and in Isaiah 53, that the Messiah is the servant, the holy servant of the Lord. And so an application of their prayer for us today as we're going through this coronavirus situation with governing authorities overstretching their power over the body of Messiah. So here's our prayer, O Lord and creator of the universe, we praise you as our God. Through the mouth of our Messiah, Yeshua, Father Ruach Hodesh, he said these things would occur in our day in Luke chapter 21. He said there would be wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there would be great earthquakes and plagues and famines. Diseases, terrors, and great signs from heaven. So as we see these things greatly increase in our lives, O oh Lord, help us to walk boldly with you, following your commands, boldly sharing the good news message of Yeshua with our neighbors. In Yeshua's name. It's going to be an interesting next few months to see how our governors and how our leaders are going to be ruling this nation. Are they going to try and stop congregations and churches around the world from meeting? Will they try and stop and do that again? And will this time everyone listen? The more we study the book of Acts, the less I believe we will when it comes to making a determination on what God tells us to do rather than what man tells us to do. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Ruach Kodesh and began to speak the word of God with boldness. So God immediately answered their prayer by causing an earthquake, filling them with the Ruach Kodesh. And this means the Lord took complete control over their minds, their bodies, and their spirits, and especially their mouths. They prayed for boldness, and they got boldness. The Greek grammar shows that they continued to speak God's word with boldness. It wasn't just a one-time aspect or event in their lives. It was a continuous aspect in their lives. Once they got it, they continued on preaching with great boldness. Verse 32. And the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonged to him was his own. But all things were common property to them. So now we see the results of a true community of believers on fire for the Lord. They were unified in living for the Lord. They did not have people coming into their congregation.
congregation and telling them they need to be more like Gentiles. Or they didn't have folks telling them they need to be more Jewish in their lifestyle as well. At Beth Yeshua, sure, we've had both. We're happy where we're at in our Jewishness because we're more concerned with our fellowship with the Lord. We're more concerned with making Him happy in our daily lives. Which is what our first century counterparts were concerned about as well. They were spiritually united, sharing of their earthly things. They shared their earthly things so that all of them could physically survive. They were taking care of one another's needs, not only physically, but spiritually and emotionally as well. They were meeting in house to house every day. They were eating together, taking care of needs. And then when a great need came, they took care of that as well. Verse 33. And with great power, the apostles were giving witness to the resurrection of Adonai Yeshua and abundant grace was upon them all. You see, when you follow the Lord and everybody's following the Lord and doing their part, what happens? God pours out blessings, His grace and His mercy upon you and upon everybody. So the Lord continued to answer their prayers. They preached the gospel and performed many miracles, wonders, and signs. God worked through them dramatically. These miracles helped to substantiate the gospel preached in the name of Yeshua, who was resurrected. The resurrection is where the power of God is revealed. The miracles are performed in this resurrection power. Why? Because the resurrection shows God has the power over death. And death is the consequence of sin. And since Yeshua died for our sin, we can have victory over the consequences of our sins. If we only repent and believe in Him. An interesting note here in verse 29 through 33. The apostles were the ones that God was working His miracles through. It doesn't say that it was all the disciples, but only the apostles. We're going to see this throughout the book that God worked the miracles through the apostles and their designated delegates like Paul or Philip or Stephen. We need to remember that we do not draw our theology out of the book of Acts unless it is verified by the rest of scripture. So let me give you an example that occurs within the book of Acts. It's the receiving of the Ruach Kodesh. Now many in our, in our believing world, in the body of Messiah, believe that you have to receive the Ruach Kodesh by the laying on of hands. Now there are four accounts in the book of Acts, but only one verifies that any people receive the Holy Spirit by laying on of hands. Only one out of four. And so God gave the Ruach Kodesh to different groups of people in different ways at the beginning of the Messianic community. This was so that he could show the apostles were his chosen leaders of the body of Messiah. So much of what happened in the early congregation was through the apostles. The twelve apostles in the first section of the apostles, and then there was a second group of apostles that came after them and during their time as well. And so it's very difficult to take any scriptures in the book of Acts and make a whole theology after them because there are differences between the book of Acts and then the rest of the scripture in the Brit Chadashah. We're going to talk about that as we go through those scriptures as well. But let's get back to the story in verse 34 and 35. For there was not a needy person among them, for all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles' feet. 
and they would be distributed to each as any had need. The Lord provided for the needs of the community through the congregants. When the need arose, those that owned land or houses, and this could be a great need, they sold their land, they sold their house, and they gave the proceeds to the apostles. The, apostles, uh, the authority of the apostles is revealed here once again. They didn't sell their houses and give the money to the finance committee of the Jewish congregation. There in Jerusalem, they gave it to the apostles. They were the humans that were in charge of the congregation. Then they distributed the money and the funds as the Lord instructed them through their committees, through their helpers. So the Lord is directing great miracles, signs and wonders through the apostles. They were in charge of the congregation. Everybody, every believer, all 15,000 of them, approximately 15,000 of them, were united, were working together in a common cause, moving forward in the Ruach Hadesh. Pretty powerful, huh? That's a lot of folks, isn't it? At Beth Yeshua, we got about 40 some odd people on our membership rolls. If we have 45 people all working together, united, moving in one direction, and all doing our part, who knows what would happen, right? God knows. But miracles and signs and wonders and Salvations and blessings would be pouring out. And so we're going to start next week, next uh, Monday and then Friday. We're back to being normal again, right? So verse 36 and 37 here, And Joseph, a Levite of Cyprian birth, was also called Barnabas, by the apostles, which translated means son of encouragement. Now we see a good example of godliness, and then in chapter 5, we're going to see a bad example. But Barnabas here in the Hebrew is bar Naba. bar Naba, And bar Naba means son of exhortation. His name was Joseph, he was a Levite, and he was born in Cyprus. Cyprus is an, an island in the Mediterranean Sea, northwest of Israel. It's the only major island that's out there. So this title was given to Joseph because God used Joseph powerfully in his spiritual gift of exhortation. Exhortation is encouragement. So he's the son of encouragement. Anybody in the congregation needed some an encouraging word? Well, they knew where to go. That's his spiritual gift, and so he could use that gift and help everybody in the congregation when they needed it. And he did. He was a great encourager as well. Verse 37. And so Joseph, Barnabas, who owned a tract of land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now remember, the Torah did not allow Levites to own land. So how did Joseph, a Levite, own land? Well, after the Babylonian captivity, when the Jewish people returned to the land, they did not resettle in their tribal divisions. And so there was a big mishmash of Jewish people living everywhere and wherever they wanted to live. So they didn't break up into their tribal counties, tribal divisions. So Joseph owned land. And here, Barnaba shows a great, merciful love for his people by selling the land and giving the money over to the apostles for distribution to the poor Jewish people of the congregation. And there were poor people there. What a wonderful example of love for all of us to follow. 
Now, it does not mean that you are to go and sell your house and give the money, the proceeds, to bet to Shua. But it does mean that you are to do your part to sustain in the health and welfare, spiritual welfare, of our congregation. So, in summary, the apostles listened and obeyed the Lord's instructions to go to the temple to pray. When they got there, Kepha additionally listened and prayed for the lame man to be healed. So while they were doing what God wanted them to do, God then performed a miracle through them. You know what? I want to see more miracles here. I bet you sure I want to see more miracles here in Las Vegas. We just need to be out and about doing God's will and he will work. He was healed. They got in trouble with those in authority, but the Lord rescued them and nothing happened to them. They came back to the brethren and tell them of God's miracle powers and this encouraged everyone else. Then all the people began to be used by the Lord and help one another in taking care of God's needs upon them, their physical needs. Sometimes major blessings occur because one person listens and obeys. They obey the Lord, and then there's a rippling effect through the congregation. I don't know if you've heard this or not, but before coronavirus, there was revival happening in Tennessee, the state of Tennessee. And it started, I don't know with who, but with one man, one pastor started to pray, fast and pray. Then he had his congregation fast and pray. And then other congregations joined in, fasting and praying. And God started revival. And then it's all throughout the state of Tennessee. Thousands and thousands of people are getting saved. Miracles are being performed. That can happen right here in Las Vegas. We just fast and pray. But let's just start praying first, at least. The apostles listened and obeyed, and the Lord blessed. We listen and obey, and guess what? The Lord will bless. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we love you, we thank you, we worship you, praise you, give you the glory. We look forward to this blessing, Lord. We look forward to the revival. Help us to fast. Help us to pray. Help us to be a part of your will be done here in Las Vegas, O oh Lord. We do pray that miracles would happen. We do pray that you would use us to share the good news, that revival will occur. We pray that you're going to be using Beth Yeshua to do that, Lord. Lord, look at all the names that are on this list. Asking for healing, we pray for miracles, Lord, upon their lives. Pray that they get healed in an instant, O oh Lord, that you work your wonders. We know it's all about your will to be done, Lord. But we have the faith to know that you can heal. You can heal anyone at any time. You can also do it in any way that you want to do it, Lord. So we pray that the salvation, that the, the gospel news, the good news of Yeshua would go forth in a mighty way that many are going to be saved through this ministry. And that you use many here in Las Vegas. We don't have a lot of believers here, but Lord, we pray for many, many more to come. Use who's ever here and willing to be used by you. To glorify thy name, Lord, work your wonders, work your power. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray, amen and amen. Well, we'll finish up with a, our final prayers and be blessed.
would like to thank the Lord for his provision. I have a question over the one. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haron, Borei puri hagafen, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Blessing over the bread. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haron, amoti lechem li haaretz amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the bread from the earth. Amen. We stand for the Aaronic benediction. Shalom, 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 shalom
Shalom, everybody. Mishpocha and Bet Yeshua around the world. We're so glad you joined us tonight. Go to Facebook Alive. Go to YouTube and be blessed. Monday night, Bible study will be on Facebook only. No Zoom. And then Friday night, back to Facebook Alive again. You can also go to YouTube if you'd like. Shabbat Shalom. We'll see you next time. Amen.